Right, here's the uh, bottom plate, or bottom board, I guess you'd call it, of the uh, Thorns turntable. So here's the original one. You can see how thin and flimsy it is. And of course it's just like a, a hardboard kind of thing. And uh, as you can see, there's a number of holes in it, which are for the, uh, the transport screws where you uh, screw down the uh, suspension system so it doesn't bounce around during travel. And also you have another couple of screws, not sure what those are for. I know that those two are the suspension screws. These, I think, they're just for another adjustment, not sure what. And then, of course, you've got the, the notches for the cables, uh, the power cable and the uh, RCA jacks that come out from the bottom of the, uh, of the arm and, uh, and the power supply. So, what I've done is I've translated that. I went to uh, Torona. Actually, it's now called Lowe's. I bought them out. And I bought a big sheet of half-inch... Uh, MDF. I was going to go three quarters, but I think three quarters is just too thick for the uh, the bottom. It'll look, I think it it'll take away from the uh, the look of it. I think this is rigid enough. So what I did was, uh, of course, we got doggy here watching. Um, very in a very interested way, but in the way. So if you can see, I don't know if you can see it. I've pencil marked all of the uh, the screw points. The uh, screw holes that you see for screwing it on the bottom. I've dr drawn in the notches and all of where the holes are, and I'm just about to uh, take my drill and uh, drill everything out. And I probably will have to use a jigsaw for these, or I've got a a fine saw I can maybe uh, use. Anyway, we'll uh, try that. Doesn't this one doesn't really matter how it looks uh, because it's underneath and then once I've got everything notched out and everything fits properly I'm going to paint it black just so it doesn't stand out when you uh, have it on the turntable. So without further ado and then the other thing I'm going to try to do is use a heat gun and try to raise the sticker like I did with the uh, with the serial numbers and the CSA sticker and uh, bring that up and then translate that over to there so there you have it uh, basically how I'm doing the uh, and of course I'm lucky in that I have the the bottom board so I can use it as a template those that don't have one well um, I can always provide the measurements if uh, if you PM me so let's get on with the work here so there you have it uh, got some holes pre-drilled here and this is actually my second uh, baseboard because I've always been meaning to make one for my upstairs turntable which I've never gotten around to so I figured since I'm making one for uh, my red one I might as well make one for the upstairs one so over here you see the other one which is now in its in the painting process um, where I've cored all the holes out put the uh, cord holes in just as per the other one and then uh, what I'll do is as per the original, as I mentioned previously, I'm going to see if I can salvage that because uh, it's all in German, which is kind of neat, and see if I can put that onto uh, this once it's all fully painted up. So this is the underside, so I don't have to really be as finicky about the paint job on this side because that's going to be inside the actual unit. And then the other side, which is uh, the side that I drilled through, so you don't get any of this... Uh, MDF has a nasty, unless you block it behind, and I didn't really need to, again, because it's on the inside, and it, what it does is it flakes on the other side, on that on the side where you're drilling through to, and it's much smoother on the other side, so that will be the underneath part that you can actually see. So there you have it. Um, another successful little project, complete, almost, until the painting's done. The uh, evolution in uh, transferring to a thicker bottom plate or bottom board on the uh, Thorns TD-165 turntable is to take this uh, cool sticker off. It's in uh, written in German. And as you can see, I did it with this one already. So all I really did was uh, use this heat gun here. And you just pry up a little bit of a corner here. Um, 
give it get it real hot so it releases the glue which is on really really tight so you have to sort of coax it off and just pull it gently and I tried using a uh, uh, I was using the pliers basically because of the heat so I you know so I could keep my hands out of the heat but as you can see right in the corner there I ripped a little bit off so no mind you can you know from a distance it's not that bad and what I've done is I've used this uh, really scoop them uh, uh, double-sided tape and uh, just to hold it all together and basically what I'll do is put it over here I don't want to put it on yet because of the glue is or the, uh, the paint is still drying um, it's dry to touch right now, but uh, I want to make sure it gets nice and solid. So basically it'll go there, and then you can see that uh, there's a little bit of touch of originality, but uh, a much, much thicker MDF uh, sturdy uh, bottom plate for the uh, Thorns TD-165. So there you have it, another um, success story, I think. I'm going to try and get this one done a little bit better and this one is going to probably go on to my uh, onto either my red or my uh, first table that I just did or that I did there you go there you have it uh, bottom board complete all right a little trick that I used is uh, once I got the uh, thing pulled out back far enough just use an oven mitt so that I can uh, grab it and not worry about burning my hand basically um, with the high heat necessary to uh, release the glue on here so um, as you can see I haven't ripped this one yet but I'm only a third of the way done so hopefully if I'm patient we'll get her off all in one piece have it great success got her off in one piece without ripping it like I did the last time so don't use one of those is one of those I learned. So there you can see the heat that uh, was necessary to uh, get the glue to release. The paper is uh, not quite as sizzled as the uh, the backboard. So uh, looks good. And there she is in all her finished glory, all painted up, um, label transferred, and I've included or I put on the. Uh, the feet, which are adjustable in height, so if you have an unbalanced uh, tabletop or whatever, um, there's quite a bit of, you can see that's mu that much uh, play as far as adjustment for uh, balance between the four legs. So they're conical, if you can see, just for a little bit more uh, isolation, acoustic isolation. Remembering, of course, that it is a suspension turntable. But it also has these little feet here, or these uh, bases that are rubber on the bottom. So if you have furniture, you're not going to scratch it. And they actually um, cup. You can see a little hole there, the point of the, uh, the cone. So uh, makes it nice and rigid. And uh, a nice sturdy... Uh, half inch MDF as you can see it's quite thick compared to the old uh, the old baseboards and then I've got my uh, screws which are sized for it little uh, mini Robertsons and uh, that's the base so here we have the uh, the bottom exposed of the uh, the turntable and what I'm focusing on now is taking these crappy RCA jacks that have been cut down. You can actually see it's been cut down several times. And in fact, they didn't even have the courtesy to make the wires the same length. Not that that really matters at the speed that electrons flow. However, um, what, uh, what is most annoying is the fact that this uh, RCA cable is very, very short and very dated. So what I'm gonna do is modernize it with uh, a set of uh, gold um, RCA jacks that I have and what I'm going to do you can see this bus kind of an arrangement where you have um, the uh, twin arm leads come out uh, through here uh, three of them so you have a left right and a ground 
common ground and the grounding on this particular turntable and oh, oh, for the bus there's also this little case here that goes over top just to prevent it you know wires from uh, getting exposed and you know, very delicate soldering that goes in here these things are just like one hair width so the idea is to provide protection I guess in this old uh, sort of format so uh, what happens is this block here that uh, the connectors go from the uh, from the tone arm lead wires to the actual RCA um, is through these posts on this uh, on this bust or on this on this block and in behind is where the uh, RCA jack I, I guess you can see it there comes in and it snakes a couple of times around and that just provides strain relief so it doesn't put any strain on these uh, soldered connections here so what I'm going to do is uh, try and pop that out and uh, replace this old dated uh, RCA jack that you see here with uh, more modern one and while I do that um, I'm gonna have to unsolder those connections and then uh, resolder the new arm on and uh, pop that back in and then put the block back on so in case I do muddle up these uh, these connections because some of these uh, some of these solder connections I mean some of these wires that from the tone arm leads especially coming from there are so thin they're like a basically a hair width in diameter kind of thing. Um, so it'd be very easy to pull them out if I uh, accidentally torqued them. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to label them, so left and right and then ground. So if I do pop anything off, I can resolder it and, uh, and repair it. So um, we'll see how that goes and uh, report back and, on uh, how successful or unsuccessful I have been. Oh, and uh, the other thing is, uh, this here is the ground to the chassis. Um, as you will note, unlike most turntables where you have a left and a right, and these ones aren't even identified as what to what's left and right, that's another failing with this, uh, this arrangement, is uh, the fact that there's no ground wire that comes off of it. So what they've done with this particular turntable back in this day is just grounded it to chassis. And uh, it worked quite well. Uh, there is a grounding mod that's actually in the manual, the updated manual that I'm going to attempt. And that basically, um, the, the grounding wire actually goes to the right hand channel, which is right here, uh, to the ground on the right channel, and that's positive on the right channel. And um, there's a, a way of actually grounding to the other part of the chassis here and then running a ground wire basically along and then uh, grounding to your preamp and I think that's what I'm going to attempt here so we'll see how it goes and if it's successful yay for me if not well then I might have to go to a technician who knows we'll see how it goes and there you have it marked left right and uh, you can see the two thicker cables are actually the left and right one has the red wire which is the right channel and also a ground in it and then the uh, left channel has a yellow wire that comes out that matches with this uh, yellow that you see right there so yellow and just uh, copper and then uh, red and copper and that sort of matches on the head shell or the head uh, tone arm lead wires that come out so there you have it we'll try to remove the block now well, I'm actually pretty shocked how easy it was to get out. So what I did was, these are right here, that pin and that peg right there, the pin, peg, not a pin, there and there, pop into these holes, and they're just pressure seated. So all I did was I took a fatty kind of screwdriver, put it in, and there's a little bit of a gap between there, where is it, there, yeah, there, and where the the peg goes into the into the hole and all I did was I just took put this in between uh, put this in between and then twisted and it just popped it out like nobody's business on both of them so um, what I'm gonna do now is fire up the old soldering iron which I have over here it's a crappy one but uh, it'll do the job hopefully for this time around uh, I got my good one is down on my boat so 
got to go with what I got. So uh, here I've stripped the leads and basically this will figure eight in, in through these little uh, notches here just like uh, you can see how this is in a figure eight pattern it actually wove through these notches to provide a strain relief so that's what I'm going to do next is uh, decouple this and then uh, see if I first I've got to see if I've got some soldering stuff at home because I took most of it to the boat so I'll have to see if I've got some uh, soldering wire the proper kind anyway we'll uh, um, put this in abeyance until I get the right materials very tickled pink I got my trusty little soldering iron out uh, my good one is actually on the boat but that did the trick and as you can see I got really clean solders on all the terminals and hopefully I didn't knock anything out below and uh, I've got my ground wire here which I'll have to put back on and uh, we'll see how that goes we'll put it back together and uh, see how it sounds now it should sound good there we go go oh, popped her back in all I did was uh, lined up the two pegs to the holes and then I just pushed on uh, see with my flathead screwdriver just pushed on right here and right there and now I've got the whole thing back on and all I got to do is remate the uh, grounding wire to there and then I'm going to look up the manual and I believe what I do is I run a grounding wire somewhere along here to this chassis and then run the ground out along the uh, the wire parallel so we'll give that a whirl